Hi, this is David again. And this video is going to be dedicated to how to start and how to run a daycare center. And um, it's going to be a little bit general because I've run daycare centers in uh, California and I run residential treatment centers in Massachusetts and um, Kansas and Missouri. So I have a little bit of um, background with daycare centers. Uh, my minor at BYU was um, child development, family relationships, and my major was social work. And I have a master's degree from Northeastern State University in college teaching of humanities. I'm going to tell you my experience. That's all I can tell you. I'm not a head of an organization. I don't represent the government. I represent David. That's it. First of all, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you how to run a successful daycare center, which mine was. It's many years ago, but it made more money than most people make in a week today. Um, how to make it profitable <clears throat> and how to avoid pitfalls and get in trouble. First of all, daycare centers are used mostly by fairly new mothers. You're going to get children that are anywhere from a week, two weeks old, maybe a month, to children that are right up towards preschool, right at three and a half, four years old. And those mothers are working. <clears throat> I'm going to give you the psychology. Mothers don't want to leave their kids. I've only met, oh, out of all the, well, out of her hundred mothers that I've worked for, um, I've only met one that really likes her job better than her kids, because her kids were a mess. Uh, so you've got to understand the psychology of a woman to run a successful daycare center. Number one, women don't want to leave their children there. Women feel guilty leaving their children there. Women want to make sure that the people that she's leaving the child with all day long are going to not only feed and clothe and diaper the child, but also be a good uh, moral and a good uh, parental influence holding the child and talking and doing other kinds of activities. Now, <clears throat> when moms come in, I always interview them because there's some strange mothers. Uh, I want to tell you right from the get-go, if you're a male and you're going to do this alone, you might as well go get a job at McDonald's. No mother is going to turn her young children over to a male. It ain't going to happen. Now, if you have a female that basically owns this daycare center and the male is only a consultant or a director or handling the finances, then, then mothers are going to say, hey, that's okay. She's a nice person and I think she'll make a good uh, daycare provider. Now, <clears throat> don't try to be up front and be the male and expect to run a daycare center. Get somebody up front who is young, cute, vivacious, and knows about children and wants to basically run a daycare center and then tie up. Hopefully it's a husband and wife, maybe it's not. It can be very easily done with a strangers that you know each other but you're strangers to the business. So the first thing I do is um, I advertise. And um, I tell people from the very beginning, do it the way you want, that we're not the cheapest, but we're the best. Right away, if they answer that ad, they expect us to be a little bit higher in price than those that are surrounding. If they're looking for bargain day care, where you got 10,000 kids jammed in a basement with no windows and no air conditioning, and it's 50 cents uh, a week, uh, that's what they're going to get. You've got to make enough money <clears throat> in a daycare center to run a good one. You're outside. Uh, I'm assuming now uh, that most will be doing this in their house. If you've got a commercial building, then I, I don't have a lot of experience in that area. And I'm not going to hit it because I'm not going to deceive people. I've run them in my homes and I've run expensive ones and good ones. Uh, so your ad has to reflect you right at the very beginning. In the old days, we used newspapers, uh, the internet today, and, and other um, electronic ways of advertising. But I'm going to tell you something. 
Most of the advertising with daycare centers is mother to mother. If you don't think these mothers talk to each other, you don't know daycare. They do talk to each other and you will get referrals. If you've got a good client and you're um, doing a good job, they're going to tell their girlfriend, she's going to tell her girlfriend, and pretty soon you're full and now you've got a waiting list. <clears throat> Usually there's two licenses in most states. One is for six kids, uh, under whatever it is, 18 perhaps. Uh, and then there's another one for 12 kids. I don't know how you're going to make money with six kids. It's tough. You know, if you just want to make a couple hundred bucks a week extra, um, <clears throat> take six kids and work your butt off. I ran 12s because when I looked at the numbers, and in those days, we charged uh, whatever it was, 110 or something a week. That's 25, 30 years ago. And that's a $1,200 a month. Now, one of the things between the main difference between a 12 and a 6 is you have to have adult staff ratios met. So you're going to have to hire another daycare provider or two or three or four or five for part time. So if you have a girlfriend, uh, she can be there and um, that makes it legal. You've got uh, a, a license for 12 and you've got to have a 1 in 6 ratio. So a girlfriend or someone that is over, I think it is age 12. So if you've got a daughter uh, or a son who's over 12 and they're in the center while it's operating, uh, then you're legally okay. Once you drop below 6 when they're picking kids up at night, um, or you got a lot of sick kids or something, uh, you could do it alone, up to six. But uh, if you go over six, you run in seven, eight, nine by yourself, and someone will report you. I'll guarantee that. Someone will report you, and then when social services come out, you'll be um, cited, and they'll do a full investigation of the cleanliness of the house, your credentials, and the, the dishes being done right, and and uh, the sanitation of the toys and they're going to go right through it like a, a, a fine tooth comb so you're just causing yourself problems just obey the damn law obey the damn law I mean social workers that come out are just like me I'm a social worker and if I came out and I found you know 17 kids there with one person I'd cite your ass I may even close you down if I come out and you've got seven kids there and you say that your staff is sick and you're calling other people, I'm going to go, well, that's pretty reasonable. You're not supposed to do this, but it's reasonable. So there's some common sense there. Um, your ad should reflect you're not cheap. You pay staff. You have clean and nice toys. You clean your carpets every 15, 20, 30 days, always. You have a dishwasher. Everything is sterile. The toys are all put in a dishwasher every night crawling toys for the little ones and you run it and sterilize those uh, toys. You can handle um, medications. You know about that. You can also handle, you'll get these young mothers that want to bring their breast milk. And yeah, you can do that and I'll put it in a bottle and yeah, I'll go ahead and um, feed the child. That makes them very happy. It doesn't go on very long, but it makes them happy. It makes them feel like they're still in charge and that they have a little bit of say over how the child is cared for. Uh, you better buy a big uh, supply of disposable diapers and a big stack of face cloths or, or nowadays a lot of people use uh, those handy wipes, but those are expensive. And <clears throat> you ask the mother to always bring two sets of clothes. So she brings a diaper bag in the morning. If there's special medication or bottles or instructions, uh, they're in the bag. And you have a place to hang each one of those bags because if you get that crap mixed up you're going to have some really angry mothers if they go home and they got the wrong bottle they're going to wonder if their kids sucked the other kids bottle you can't screw that up separate separate very very clearly even if you want to put names on the hook separate so that you're using the right clothes and the right bottles for the right kids now most of the time we provided the bottles again we sterilize them and uh, you got to be careful some kids are allergic to milk uh, they've got to be on Infamil, and you better have that in the house in good quantity. Uh, moms come in to pick their kids up, and they're screaming at the top of their lungs. They won't be back. Yeah, two sets of clothes. Most kids can make it through the day. Now, the babies, generally, I'd rather have three sets of clothes because they spit up on each other all the time. And, well, not on each other, but on themselves. 
So mom brings in the diaper bag. You have your hours. You, you're open at 6, because most parents have got to be to work at 7, 30, 8, 9. And uh, you're going to work till 6 at night. You're going to work a 12-hour day. Because they get off of work at 4.30, 5, 5.30, they're going to fight the traffic. And they're going to get to your place around 6. <clears throat> now, have some reasonable activities. Don't make it just babysitting. Have some um, um, uh, Sesame Street uh, kinds of um, education. I use the Disney Channel a lot, especially on the little ones. Uh, that were going crazy, crawling everywhere and just didn't have enough to do. Um, in the morning, um, I would put five or six in a high chair. All, not, not the same high chair, come on, don't start that stuff. Five or six high chairs and put them in a semi-circle in front of the Disney Channel. And they love that. And then put some Cheerios or put a little bit of crackers or something for them to munch on while they're watching. That gives you time to start changing babies and start uh, feeding babies by hand that you have to do and uh, one of the things about running a good daycare center is control if you don't have control of those kids and you've got 12 kids screaming yelling throwing crap running up and down staircases jumping off the balcony you're going to be out of business you're going to be because you don't have any common sense find something for children to do according to their age and according to their abilities now i had a beautiful rug and a um a round circle that I put the, the infants in because they could contain their toys and two or three infants they can't roll over very much or crawl very much but you can see them or well, you gotta watch those infants they're the ones that will choke or die and that's kinda hard when the mom picks the baby up and says oh well it's kinda blue and it's been stiff for three hours she won't be back you'll be in jail child abuse and uh, negligence so I'll put three or four down on the, um, the uh, carpet Put a circle around them so they can't escape. Two or three, four in a high chair. Put on the Disney Channel, give them some snacks, and then I'll run and go get the infants. And of course my wives and the people who have helped me with this, it's not all me. And then feed the infants and burp them, change their pants, whatever. And then rotate, there'll be some in the high chairs that you're going to have to go change pants. Or they'll say, I got to go pee pee and you got to get them out and take them and whatever. So you're pretty much busy. Um, there's a federal program that if you feed those kids breakfast and you feed those kids lunch you're going to pick up an extra dollar or two per child per day it doesn't cost you that much to feed them so a little bit of paperwork if you've got one side of the the daycare people that know paperwork give that to them fix them a little breakfast it's got to be uh, <clears throat> milk and eggs and uh, maybe a toast uh, it's got to be nutritious it can't be just uh, you know crap stuff and same thing with lunch and then you put it down on your catalog and you go through it for a whole month, submit it to the federal government, they send you back a check for $320 or whatever it is. Keep the toys new. Go to garage sales. Buy the toys at garage sales. If you go to Toys R Us, um, you're going to go out of business. Kids break those uh, and they're filthy. That's why I use the dishwasher. I may use it twice through the middle of the night, put all the toys in the dishwasher and um, and sterilize them and in the morning take them all out they all look brand new parents come in they see that they see that don't think those mothers aren't looking around for cleanliness organization and convenience and safety for their children so you provide that all day long don't go take a nap and leave 10 or 12 little kids out in the front don't get on the damn phone and talk to your girlfriend don't go shopping God you know we got to get our heads out of our butts and realize this is hard for parents to leave their children with us you're going to be in charge of discipline with you know i had kids put peas up their damn nose and i had to take them to the emergency room and explain that to the mother thank god the kid put the pee up there and not me i had another one little girl jessica and i had a stupid um uh, cook and uh, partner and she cooked open-faced cheese sandwiches and Jessica was in a high chair and she put a hot open-faced cheese sandwich down and Jessica put her hand in it off to the emergency room again and now I've got burns on a kid's hands and I'm gonna have to explain when mom comes oh by the way we weren't watching your child and she got burned oh good I feel good about writing this check for hundred and twenty dollars this Friday 
be careful. I had one stupid kid, because we weren't watching him, he took a plastic shovel and he put it down where the washer and dryer and the dryer was on and working and, and your washer and dryer is basically going to work a lot in a daycare center. So he puts it down and it was a gas dryer and the flame melted the shovel. Now I had to buy a new dryer and when the mothers came in that night they go, man, what was burning? Oh, well, shovel in the dryer. Oh, okay, okay. You're going to have those things. I had, oh God, I had Timmy. I'll never forget. Timmy would sit in a high chair and he'd spit on the tray and he'd play in it for hours. There's nothing wrong with the kid. That was just his toy. Spit. Oh God, and his sister, her name skips me right now. She cried and cried and cried. I mean, it was very hard to keep that little girl happy no matter what you said and did. Then you're going to have them in the house, out of the house. If you're in California, it's pretty neat to have a daycare center because you got 24-7. Uh, the kids, some can be out, some can be in, and you spread them out. You've, that's easy. If you spread them out, boy, you jam them in one room and uh, you might as well call the mental institution for yourself. If you live in a winter state, you better have a house that has you know, maybe two floors and or three, four, or five bedrooms because when you put the kids down to go to sleep, you, you can't put two or three babies uh, down with two or three toddlers in the same room. The toddlers are going to jump over the side of the kids' uh, crib and jump up and down on the head of a brand new baby. And when you put those cribs up, don't put them next to curtains. Did I go in and find one kid, grab the curtain, and had it wrapped around them? Good thing I checked every 15 minutes. No problem, no marks, no, no damage, but I never had a curtain, again, anywhere near that a baby can stand up and grab the curtain and be tangled. Cribs should be new, and they should be wiped off every night by staff uh, that, uh, you know, alcohol and whatever, because kids throw up, change those sheets every night. I don't care if they're dirty or not. A crib sheet has to be changed just like a hospital sheet every night. And uh, usually you're not giving a kid a bath. Uh, you do if, if it craps all over itself. What, what choice do you have? You're going to have to strip uh, the baby down and, and uh, put it in the shower or hold it up, however you're going to do it. Uh, be careful of bathtubs. God, they are the kiss of death. In daycare centers, you, you put a baby in there and it's only got two inches of water and she can barely sit up or she can hold up on the side and then suddenly the phone rings or another mother comes to the door and you leave the damn room. When you've got a baby in a bathtub, you never leave the room. You run to the door, ah, oh, it's your old friend, and you're chatting, and you go, oh, 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 I forgot, Jenny's in the bath. You run in, she's face down in the bath. How do you explain that to a mother? Is that supervision? The mother get her money's worth? That a baby's floating dead down in the water because you went to the door and you were so stupid you got distracted? You turn that water on in a room with the child, you stay with it. You don't, many times it'll overflow too. So, danger is everywhere. I, I remember I had a little, oh uh, God, I can't remember his name now either. Um, and he was one of my only black kids. <clears throat> and I'd hire a lady and she was sitting out on the patio and it was fall and the leaves were blowing a little bit in California. And um, <clears throat> I told her, because I had three or four in a, a circle, I said, now be careful and watch them because um, sometimes <clears throat> they'll get a leaf in their mouth and then it goes from bad to worse. Oh, okay, I know, I've been a mother, I'm 52 years old and I've raised 900 kids, none of them died, I know everything. Let me tell you, a vagina does not make you a caregiver. I look across the yard and I see my little kitties rolled over on his side not moving. And I yell at her, what the hell's going on there? Oh, I don't know. I don't... So I run across the yard like a madman. My little black kid is cyanotic. It's hard to tell with a black kid because blue and black are very close. He wasn't breathing. She didn't do her job. Now I have to handle the emergency. So I put my finger in his mouth on the side, come back, grabbed the leaf, pulled it out, got him breathing again, and no marks, and Mom never knew that uh, my staff, the old woman, didn't know shit about child care. She wasn't careful enough. Hire people 
that you know are going to have their eyes on that child and the group. Hire people who can hear noises going, what the hell is that? Oh, that's the dryer. One of the kids put their toy in the dryer. Jeez, who's watching that kid? Be careful of sliding glass doors and be careful of uh, hinge doors. They get their fingers in that. I don't know how they do it, but they do all the time. Of course, you've got to have your chemicals up and your bleach and uh, comet and whatever where a baby can't open a cupboard uh, and get into it. And you've got to be extremely uh, clean in your kitchen. Use your damn dishwashers. Use hot water. Don't let food be unrefrigerated. It's either on the stove or it's being served or it's in a refrigerator. Get a food handler's permit and understand what those temperatures have to be and the size and the servings. Don't give a, a T-bone steak to a, a six-month-old baby. You've got to know, you know, is this baby on solids yet? Is this baby able to take, um, you know, fruits and vegetables? Oh! Mom said this one is allergic to green vegetables. Oh, that's why he's got all these scars and, 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 and blotches all over his skin. Yeah, get that off before mom shows up. You're running a business. You're running a safety business. And these little people you are watching are the most damn dangerous things uh, that you'll ever find. And if you don't have gates, locks, cribs, where the sides don't fall down and they fall out over on their head and you stay in the bathroom if you have to bathe one of them and you watch them when they eat good lord I had one little kid couldn't eat a hot dog no matter what you did he choked every time every time he ate a hot dog and I had one that loved putting pennies in the electrical socket try to explain that to mom look at his hand oh that'll heal up in a few days she won't be back she'll tell all of her girlfriends and they'll all leave too You've got to plug all of your electrical sockets. You've got to be careful where your lamps are and who can touch and who can't. You've got to be careful of fireplaces. Good Lord, that's one of the best places for a kid to get burned and hurt. And just a screen ain't going to do it. It ain't going to do it. They'll go around that screen. If that screen is in the ground and, and anchored, well, now you've got at least uh, some glass, hopefully in the fireplace, and a screen out front. But the wood, if you're really burning it in Massachusetts, is full of uh, spiders and snakes. And when the, you, the mom comes in, you go, oh, well, your, your kid was bit by a, a snake today. A snake? Yeah, we had it in the wood pile, but we didn't see it. Think! Don't let those kids get hurt. Don't have one mark on them. Now, are you going to have some obnoxious kids? You bet your ass you are. And you, you have some kids that uh, are going to be out of control and hitting other kids, you bet your ass you are. That's where I use high chairs. That's, a high chair can't hurt a baby. And a mom walks in and her kid's in a high chair, that doesn't look like abuse. That looks like reasonable behavior. He's sitting in front of the Disney Channel, he's watching, he's got some Cheerios. She doesn't know, he's beating the crap out of two other kids. An hour ago, I just pick him up and say, hey, Ryan, sit in the high chair for a little while, you can watch it. Oh, okay. Take the bat out of his hand so he's not beating the other kids up. Uh, you got to watch out for those infants with sudden infant death. You better read up on that and know, uh, you know, putting them on their back helps a little bit. And uh, about choking, you better be CPR qualified. Uh, mouth to mouth on a small baby and, and chest compressions. And the bigger kids, a little bit slower and a little bit stronger compressions. You got to know all that because you're going to use it. You're going to use it. I've had uh, one kid that had projectile vomiting. He'd lay on his back, he'd spit up in the air, and he'd come back and he'd inhale it in his lungs. You gotta get that kid over, get his mouth cleaned up, you have gotta be able to get out of mouth to mouth and be able to do chest compressions and bring that baby back. Mom doesn't want that baby dead when she picks it up. That's your job. That's why you're being paid $1,000, $1,500 a week because they trust you. They trust you. And you better earn that trust. And just because you've had a, a baby and you have a vagina, that doesn't make you qualified. I've seen more unqualified mothers in my life than I've seen sometimes qualified. And some of the mothers are going to be strange. I had one. Um, we don't watch TV. Now you got 11 kids that watch TV. What are you going to do with that kid? Hide him around the corner? Velcro him to the wall? Mom doesn't want him watch uh, Anthony. Antonio. Antonio. I remember. It's been 30 years ago. 
Well, you got to find something for that little kid to do and please the mother. Now, when the mothers come to pick the kids up, you start to memorize when those mothers are coming in because they want those kids to look like brand new. You get that kid's face wiped and his nose clean, you get a clean diaper on them, and you take the second set of clothes or third set of clothes out of the diaper bag and dress them and then sit them in a high chair or sit them in a walker or stroller or something so they don't get dirty again and mom comes within 25 minutes and there she is with her little ponytails and clean and clean and she's happy and you're making your money. You're doing your damn job. If you can't do that and she comes in, you don't know where the baby is. Oh, she got hurt on the swing today, but I didn't think it was important to take her to the hospital. You're not going to run a business. You're not going to make money, and you might get in jail. Negligence in, in child care or the accusation, be careful of your males and your females, but mostly the males. If you get a charge of child molestation, you might as well close down. doesn't matter if it even happened. doesn't even matter. Your reputation in the community now, oh, that's where the kids got molested. Uh. When you change, kids, be in public. Don't take a baby or a small child, especially if you're a male, into the bedroom and shut the door and the curtains and now you've been in there three hours changing the baby. That's shit. You have your changing table and, and that stuff right out in public where the kids are, where the parents walk through, where the staff walks through, and when you change that baby, you get those legs up and you get that wet face cloth, and your business, you wipe that baby down, and then you put that diaper on quick and snap it on, get the pants back on, it's all business. Parents appreciate that. They know you're there running a business. So, be careful of the kitchen. Be careful that kids get into the bathroom. I used a lot of those wooden gates. I put wooden gates up on the bathrooms so they couldn't get in. I put wooden gates up on certain bedrooms where um, I knew they were sleeping, but if they woke up, they were trouble kids. So they'd yell at the gate. They'll stand at the gate and yell, and at least you've got control. Now, I always interviewed the parents after I put the ad in the paper, and the ad would say things like, um, you know, CPR qualified. It would give all of the credentials. Um, it would give uh, the information that we're not the cheapest. So that takes the, that takes that conversation and dumps it right in the trash can because if a mother picks up the phone and says, well, I have a little girl and she was born nine months ago and I want to go back to work, and uh, then I would ask the questions, you know, is the child healthy? Is she on medications? What kind of care are you looking for? What are the hours that you want to work? And if it sounds like a reasonable mother, then I say, okay, well, why don't you come in this Friday and, and my wife and I will talk about it and, uh, and we'll see if we can be of help to you. Well, they come. You be dressed up. You be professional. You do it after hours. Don't interview a parent while you're doing daycare. You're running over here. This one's crapping his pants. This one's got his nose running. And you're going to try to tell a mother what a good place you've got. It might be. But this, the interview is so distractive, when she brings that baby in, you better fall all over it. Oh, that's the cutest baby. I'd love to have her here or him here. That's a wonder. And that's what she wants to hear. And it might be cute. Might be. Most of them are. And so I have written materials. I say, you know, this is the name of our company. This is our phone number and our faxes. And, and uh, you can make sure you say this. You can come in here unannounced at any time. Some of them will, just to make sure how that place is being run. And they'll see some of the chaos and whatever, but they're not going to see molestation. They're not going to see kids bleeding all through the place. They'll come in. Some of them will come home from work early, and you won't have that baby quite ready, and uh, you'll finish it, or she'll help you finish it, and then she'll go out the door. Uh, don't spend a lot of time talking when they come and talking when they go. You're supposed to be supervising those other kids, and when you stand at the door for 15 minutes, you've got three that fell in the pool in the backyard. Got to be with the kids. So the interview says, this is what we do, this is how we do it. And the way I did it, it was successful. I said, every Friday you pay. Every Friday you pay. And if you're absent, you pay the same amount. You owe $120 or $30 a week. If you're absent two days, I don't rebate that. I have to pay for my staff. I have to pay for the food. I have to pay for the utilities. That, those prices don't go. So... I'm already pulling in upper class mothers and money. They don't care. 
you get some poor family and they go, well, if she's absent three times, do I only pay $14? You want those kind of clients? Go get them. I learned very quickly in daycare, go get the easy moms and the rich moms and the professional moms and you're going to run a damn tight ship in business. Now I expanded uh, because we had the license to do this. I had a couple of parents that, that wanted to travel, go on to Hawaii and Europe and they wanted to dump their kid on a weekend or um, four days in a row or whatever. We did overnight care. We charged an arm and a leg for it, hundreds and hundreds, of, like a hundred dollars a night. Four nights, you make an extra four hundred dollars. So we did that, and that added to our income. The food program, federal food program, added to the income. Now, here's where you can get in trouble again. If you take them to the park, how the hell are you going to take twelve small children? Some walk, some don't. Diaper bags, bottles, uh, and uh, diapers and have 12 car seats in a Volkswagen. Don't be dumb. Don't transport kids more than you have car seats for and seat belts. Utah has a stupid law. If all the seat belts are being used, the others don't have to have seat belts. Yeah, there, there, there's a good one for you. Here's your Utah. We love kids, but do they? So anyway, um, trying to get them out. Now take them into the backyard, of course. Having a neat little swing set, of course. Be careful. Be careful. Those damn swing sets, the babies that are 18 or, or 23 months old, they'll walk in front of a kid that's swinging and bam, right in the mouth. There, the little one goes over and over and blood everywhere and their teeth are broken. you got to supervise and you've got to separate. You may want fences or you may want staff right there pushing the little ones away or put the little ones in a circle, like I said. Don't let them get out there because they will get hurt. Um, you're going to have to water your lawn on your, your um, uh, lawns that you're using at night. And if you have cats or dogs, you better not have a daycare center. I'm telling you that right now. If you have a nasty cat, and of course you're going to say, oh, my cat's not nasty. Let me tell you, a lot of those kids are allergic to cats. And whether they're in the room or not, their hair and their influence has been in that room. And you'll have a baby sneezing all the time, and you'll have them covered with hives and, you know, don't have animals. Clean your carpets every two or three weeks. Have it paid for or do it yourself. Nothing worse than to come into a house and the mother looks at the carpet and there's stains all over it and they go, geez, you know, I don't want my kids crawling on that. Um, keep your windows and generally the house in, in, in immaculate condition. The lawn out front immaculate and God, watch out for any cars. Don't let the kids play in the front yard and mothers and, and other business people that service your place come in and run over a child. God, keep those kids in the backyard, keep your gates up, keep the safety, keep them separated, keep kids of the same age together. Don't let the, the, the four-year-old be sucking on the six-month-old bottle and don't mix up crap in the diaper bags. I'm telling you, that's one of the greatest things that a mother will judge. If you can't get my kid's bottle in there, did you get my kid's bottle in its mouth? It's a good question. So, have some plastic wrap. I used to use um, bags that uh, the newspaper uh, companies used where uh, if it was raining, they would put uh, the newspaper in a plastic bag. So put, uh, you know, coals that have been spit up on. Don't do the wash. Don't put that in there. You sell germs filled. Mothers don't want their clothes mixed with other. Just bag it and seal it and put it in the diaper bag and that's the way they're going to want it. Watch out for the trash. Don't have mice. Don't have rats. Have a covered container, have it empty properly, put all the trash in a trash bag, and uh, be careful of hot lights. A baby will reach up and grab that bulb. Look and look and look for safety, and child-proof the areas that those kids are going to be in. Read about child development. Learn that some kids can color, some kids can read, some kids do well watching Sesame Street. They learn stuff, other kids want to watch the Disney Channel. The girls play a little bit different with toys than the boys do. A sandbox? Good Lord, you'll have every cat in the neighborhood shitting in your sandbox and when the mothers come in they go, hey, there's cat shit in the sandbox. Oh, I'll get it out before she goes in. That ain't a business. That's a stupid person. Get rid of animals. I don't care if it's a bird. Now, I'll tell you what you can get away with. It's an aquarium. Uh, if it's safe. Be careful. They'll grab it and they'll rock it. Now they got 
you know, 800 pounds of water in a glass container crushing them. But if you've got a secured aquarium, that's a wonderful thing. Kids love aquariums and you can have it low on the ground, but you know, tied into the, the cement and tied into the iron or whatever. And the kids will watch that and make sure the top is on it. Make sure the top is sealed. The kids will lean over it and they will in the toilet. I've seen kids fall in a toilet upside down. They're just barely able to walk and someone's left the toilet seat up. They go in the bathroom and they lean over to play with the water. Their heads are bigger than their bodies. Their heads are heavier than their body. And bam, they go in face first and now they're drowning in the toilet. That isn't a good thing in a daycare center. Uh, you're going to have some kids that are quasi-toilet trained and some kids that you are trying to help toilet train. So you're going to have to be wiping kids' butts. You're going to have to use a, a face cloth or a um, um, wipe or whatever you're going to use uh, to help them stay clean. The mother doesn't want to come and go, geez, what do you do? Just crap his pants? Keep them clean. Keep them clean. Um, you're going to get ear infections, you're going to get colds, and you're going to get the new kids that come in are going to be sick the first five or six weeks. It won't happen for two or three weeks, and then it'll happen for a week or so. When new kids go into a school or into a daycare center, there's many, many germs there that their immune system has never been exposed to. They will get sick. They will get the runny nose. They will get the temperature. They will get ear infections. And um, you can assure the parents that's going to go away. Within a week, they'll have every germ that every other kid has there, and they won't be sick. Make sure you're taking in healthy kids. Um, you may want to have a doctor's certificate from the doctor that says, this is a healthy child. Uh, and so now you know it's a healthy child. Be careful of medications. Don't give a baby medications and leave it out somewhere. And a four-year-old comes over and takes down uh, ten... Uh, you know, pills. That's hard to explain. Now you're off to the hospital pumping the stomach of a baby. There's so many dangers and there's so many um, business things that are associated with a daycare center. Uh, you will be subject to uh, surprise inspections from the state, counting the ratios, counting that people are there, and you're going to have to have a history of each child. And you're going to have to have the child's name or, and or social security number, the parent's name, emergency numbers, the name of the doctor. You're going to have to keep a file on each one of those children. And so when the investigator walks in and says, uh, give me Timmy and Jeannie and uh, Jennifer's files. And he'll look at or she'll look at it and they'll say, good, that's good documentation. So if the child is sick, child's on medications, you're documenting when you're giving it, uh, who gave you permission to give it, uh, etc. Keep your medicine cabinet locked. Can't tell enough on that. Don't have a medicine cabinet can open. I see kids pull the drawers out. It becomes a staircase. They climb up on the sink. They open up the mirror. And then they start taking, uh, you know, it's hard to explain to a mom that her child sucked down uh, a bottle or a tube of preposition H. The mother's going to say, oh, where were you? Say, oh, is babysitting somebody? It won't. How did they have enough time to go in there? Weren't you watching? The answer is no. You weren't watching. Don't sit. Don't watch TV unless you've got all the kids in the same room with you. Don't go in the back room. Go to the bathroom quickly. Lock the door. Don't let any other kids in there with you. It's bad PR, that's for sure. Your job is to see that those kids are turned back to their mothers, clean, healthy, and with a smile on their face. And if you can't do that, don't get into the daycare business. It's hard work. It's fun work. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the kids, the funny things that they said, the way they play with each other. Um, to me, it was relaxing uh, because um, I have that personality. Um, kids don't screw around. It's not that I mean screaming or jumping up and down. It's just that they feel safe. And if they feel safe, they don't cry, they don't whine, they don't hang on you. And where's my mommy? Let me give you one more last idea here, and that is this. No child wants to be out of its mother's arms and into your arms. You're not going to have kids come to the door and go, Oh, daycare person, take me away from my mom and put me in there with 12 stupid kids. It ain't going to happen. What you need to tell the parent in the interviews, your rules, your regulations, but also let these new moms know the baby is probably going to cry. But it cries, and this is the truth, it cries the same amount of time 
that you use to take the, turn the baby over to me. If you say, honey, I really love you for the day. You're going with David now. Goodbye. Hands me the baby and shuts the door, and the baby is crying. As soon as the door shuts, the baby's not crying. She gets down on the ground, runs off, and goes to play with her friend. If the mother stands there, honey, I know nobody likes to be in daycare, and I promise I will, and the baby's screaming because she knows she's going in daycare, and I will get you something this weekend, and I know you have little friends at home, and you'll see, and daddy, if she's there for 20 minutes, the baby's going to cry for 20 minutes. I'll guarantee you. That's how it works. That's exactly how it works. So, in summary, be licensed. If you're found unlicensed doing daycare, you're going to probably uh, not only receive a fine, but you may end up in court uh, several times, or if it's gross negligence, you could go to jail. Most states allow you to have um, one or two children other than your own, and you don't need a license. Once you get up around three, you're going to need a license between three and six. Now here's why so many parents and why we went to uh, daycare centers. If you're working and you've got two or three kids and you have to send them to daycare every day, you're out $300 a week. If you're making six or seven hundred, half of your income is going to daycare. You're not making money and you're letting someone else raise your child. Your children are counted in the ratio. If you have a license for 12, and you have two children, I think under 12, you have room for 10 kids because you're watching two of yours. So what's the advantage of a daycare? I loved it. We got free daycare. We made more than $1,000 a week watching other people's children. We worked for ourselves and we didn't have to pay child care. We made $1,000 a week, it was our money. We didn't have to write a check on Friday. Uh, for a daycare. And that's the other thing. Don't don't argue with them with money. It's automatic. Her diaper bag, when she brings it in on Friday, just put your check in the diaper bag. No problem. Just put your check in the diaper bag. She does it the night before or whatever, and then you go through the diaper bags uh, after they're left. You pick up your checks, you run to the bank, and you make your deposits. Don't be afraid to buy stuff at garage sales. You make a lot of money. Make sure you can clean it. Make sure that it's uh, uh, sanitary. Uh, you can use strollers, you can use car seats to put kids in and, and to, uh, you know, control them to a certain extent. You can't put a baby in a car seat for nine hours, but good grief, if you're feeding three or four other kids, you can put him or her in a car seat for 25 or 30 minutes with a mobile over it and she's playing with that. That's nothing that, that's wrong. So, in summary, obey the law. In summary, don't ever put a mark on one of those kids. In summary, you turn every one of them out every damn day with no marks, fed, dry, clean, and with little bows and a smile on its face, and the diaper bag ready. And it better have the right bottles and the right clothes in it, and you're going to make some money. You're going to make some money. You're going to have some freedom. It's a bitch because you can't take a vacation. You don't have any days off uh, because some of those mothers work holidays. You may be running, you know, a skeleton crew, um, and unless you really have somebody you can trust, and you won't. No one will run that daycare center the way you do. If you turn it over to some other mother or your best friend, she probably doesn't know shit about it. And when you come back from vacation, half your clientele is gone. Half your clientele is gone. I've told you pretty much everything that I know. I wish you the luck. Uh, it's not going to be a lot of luck. It's going to be, uh, it seems that those who work the most have the most amount of luck. Now, ain't that the truth? Love those little kids. Be good to them. Be kind to them. It's not all fun and games. It's, there's work there. But gosh, they're innocent. They, they have an attachment to you. You're going to be uh, uh, imprinted upon their memory for the rest of their lives. Hold them, talk to them, read to them when you can, play outside with them, um, give them good toys and uh, good uh, um, daycare uh, teaching. Spend a little time, have somebody come in, spend an hour, two hours where they go home with a little piece of paper that says, I love you, mom. Um, most moms don't want just babysitting. They want daycare. They want those kids learning something. So when they go to work, uh, they are guilty and the, the, their friends say, well, where's your baby? She doesn't want to say, at a babysitter, she'll, oh, he's smart. He's in daycare. It's female psychology. That's how it works. Thank you for your attention, and if you do it,
good luck. It is a good business.